we're, we're only a few steps away from KJ doing all the edits, I think. <laughs> if only I had a time. If you just keep doing it crappy enough, so he just like, <laughs> oh, I need to go. <laughs> oh, it's so sad that that might, actually might work. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's 99 all over the board. Yay. So now we're actually properly, it looks like we're recording. Cool. So you guys have got something to talk about this week? I'm on vacation. (laughs) I I, I want to be on vacation. (laughs) (laughs) My head's always on vacation. (laughs) There we have it. The vacation episode. (laughs) Welcome. (laughs) So how how long are you on holiday for, KJ? Uh, this time it's just a week. Uh, uh, okay. But after that, it's uh, five more weeks. <laughs> so you're having a week off, and then you're having five more weeks off. <laughs> Consecutively, <laughs> I, I, some I people a, call that I six have, weeks. I have a week back at work, and then I have. Oh, uh, okay. So it's uh, it is one plus five, with right. one in between. That's why I split it up. <laughs> is that a preparation or a rest week? <laughs> no, that's the swim training week because that was the time uh, that there were swim classes that were appropriate for the kids. That's so I mean, it's yeah, not so for really the, for vacation, those who don't no. know it. <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who don't know that, oh yeah, so you're talking about this week. I thought you were talking about the week in between. If that was a swim week, because then I would like to say that. Well, that's a paternal leave week, so basically you have seven weeks, but no. Okay, I, I, I'm on board. You've lost me. <laughs> <laughs> I did I did have it, and now it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if you want to get down to the nitty-gritty of it, this is actually paternity leave this week. But, I mean, it's all vacation vaca- yeah, in a way, so yeah. So half of my summer vacation is paternity leave, and the other half is actual Vacation, vacation. But I'm not, I'm not supposed to be doing work. But I'm still am doing some some work in the evenings, because some people decide that yay in the middle of uh, uh, the industrial vacation where everyone is on vacation, that's when we want stuff being done. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> then you have to try and help them in some ways. That's the fun part. We. Well, this is the last week before the project uh, takes a, a summer hiatus in July. And of course, you're going to do an updated estimate. Uh, and of course, uh, now people or subcontracting companies are just lining up to tell us that they are behind schedule and they need another week before they can deliver anything. So it's like, okay, okay. So I'm just being the... Um, the messenger of bad news to the client that all right we will probably not deliver any updated number this week as we planned so and of course next week people are starting to <clears throat> take holidays so you can't really expect to get a hold of anyone <laughs> until august so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> not the most uh, efficient week that i've hoped for but uh, it's going to be a very very quiet week next week how does business operate in scandinavia if everything just closes down till august we're really effect- I mean, um, efficient the rest of the year. <laughs> okay. I think not, nothing happens for a week and a half around Easter. And then you're basically in May. And in Norway, you have a lot of red days. And then you have spring holiday. And of course, do not overload the hotels and the, the cabins and everything. They, they split the country into several parts. So one part have spring holiday one week, the next part the next week, which means it's 14 days because people live on different sides of the border around here. So you can't really expect anyone to work in those 14 days. At least you can't plan for any meetings or getting anything done. Um, 
we also work closely with Denmark, which also have spring holiday in one of, well, outside one of those two weeks. So there's basically a three week period uh, that we can't do very much. And then it's all the national holidays in May. So between Easter and May, you get nothing done basically. And now we are in June. You have some few days you can work there, but of course, July is um it's a summer holiday month, which you can't really plan for anyone being at on site at the same time. So you can't have any big meetings or make any decisions. So, and of course, in August, people start to come back to work, but then of course you have uh, school starting up, so people have to take some time off to follow kids to school and uh, like. In, yeah, nothing basically happens in the, the first three weeks of August. Then it's September, October. One and a half week where you get some work done. Yeah. <laughs> then it's, then it's of course, uh, autumn holiday, at least a week. Uh, and of course, if yeah, people have saved up and so on, so people usually take a couple of weeks. And then you are very quickly into November. November is a efficient work week, basically. But once you're into December, oh, people sounds... who have saved, saved up holidays and time off and so on. So, uh, I, I, I mean, in the second week of December, nothing is happening until January. So, yeah, there's okay. a, a very efficient system. Why, yeah. are you, why are you so stressed all the time? You're never at work. <laughs> I have no... I mean, when you have We're to get all the behind. shit done in, in three... <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, because you have to get all the shit done in the three days you have <laughs> available to work. Oh, my God. So, self-employed in this country. I take a week off with my family. I have bank holidays off and I have two weeks off at Christmas. <laughs> and every time it rains, apparently. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Which we know is rather often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the British Isles, I would say that's quite probable <laughs> that's true yeah no i've forgotten about that bit <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the like the clause and when you do a, a deal with a demon or something like that it's about oh and I, i'll have all the days that's raining off and i live in england <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> flattens the <laughs> Yeah, I should have moved to Wales for that deal. <laughs> <laughs> the one place that's even better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, the swimming um, thing you've been doing, KJ, does that take... Let me start this again. You've been posting pictures of a lake a lot lately, and you're also doing the swimming thing with the kids. Is the swimming at the lake? The swimming is in a lake, yes. Oh, okay. And one kid has class before lunch, and one has a class after lunch. So, and it's like a half an hour drive away. So, I mean, basically the whole day goes is gone. Trying to make sure that neither of them drown, because when <laughs> when one is having class, the other one wants to swim, of course. Yeah, and I have to keep an eye on both of them. So. Yeah, it's it's a bit much, and today the sun has been shining like crazy, <laughs> so we're all pretty burned as well. <laughs> you are looking a little pink. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. I, I'm cosplaying the the Danish flag. You know, I can't really see it in the camera, oh, but it's it's red and white. That's uh, nothing. Look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that stings the eyes. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's how you you spot the British when you're on holiday in Spain. It's that uh, special kind of pink. <laughs> <laughs> and for our listeners wondering, we were just lifting the the sleeves of our t-shirts, Show, our... showing farmer's tan. <laughs> yes, very much farmer tan. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely place to learn to swim. That's really nice in the lake, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it just. How yeah, I just... did it when I was a kid, that feels the, the correct way to do it. I, I never felt at home in a inside swimming pool thingy. It's just chlorine and it feels feels filthy. I yeah. like I like lakes and the and the sea. 
Yeah, we don't seem to have. Well, we do have natural swimming, but I, nobody around here. I I can't think of a single lake that anybody swims in around here. We're so more nice. like we're nothing but lakes or or forests in this country. So yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's, it's the, bad, the bad thing is the temperature, and of course there is a a Norwegian classic horror movie from the 50s, 60s. I, I think it's black, in black and white, but uh, it's people disappearing in a lake. So I have some traumatic memories. So it's hard <laughs> entering a lake. And of course, in the sea, it's cold and a bottomless pit beneath you. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I try to stay on land or in a heated swimming pool. <laughs> I prefer to not be wet as well. So far, I haven't uh, be gone swimming <laughs> this year. <laughs> the only man to learn to swim without getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, that's like riding a I, I know how to ride a bike. I seldom do it. Uh, I mean, you learn it but, so you know it, but then you don't do it. But then again, do you need to learn how to swim if you always reach the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> It like it feels counterintuitive. <laughs> well, uh, as we were saying about the ocean, it's a, it's a, it can be a bit, uh, bit deep in, in places. So yeah, you never know. How are you going to make a central next year? Just walking over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just have yeah, to I hold mean, my uh... breath for a couple of meters there in the middle, but otherwise it's fine. It's, it's relatively shallow over Dogger Bank, isn't it? So it's. Uh... <laughs> and that depends on the tide, but yeah. <laughs> all right so with that length intro it's uh, <laughs> welcome to the number one crude mistakes <laughs> podcast with kj from crude but efficient glenn from number one projects and myself forward from behind the mistakes welcome guys Hello. thank you <laughs> so on to the making part oh, made in me this out. week <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mostly feel like I'm, I've made a mess lately in that yeah, I've, uh, I've cleaned off the, the patio stones that I, I got like last year sometime in the autumn. So I've been playing around the pressure washer and cleaning the stones, but making the area around the stones really, really <laughs> messy and, and myself included. <laughs> yeah, but you moved some stones as well, didn't you? Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of garden work. If you, I feel like I've been, uh, as I said uh, last week, I think I'm trying to uh, get on track with my video uh, videos and not not to increase that uh, uh, the archive of videos to edit. So it's been a lot of garden work instead, uh, and because the weather has been nice as well, so it's good to take the time to do it. So I've been moving yeah. stones in the in the garden, and it's a lot. It's mostly being moving stuff around, actually moving heavy stuff around <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. And have you moved everything to its final resting place, or have you got to move it all again at some point? Uh, it's, it's a lot of it. It's close to its final resting place, <laughs> at least. <laughs> But yeah, you're never never really finished, are you? <laughs> no, never. No. And I'm just looking at my garden and knowing that I have all of that ahead of me. And of course, uh, I've been talking about renting this uh, miniature excavator to move some heavy stuffs around. But now I'm also... Maybe I should just rent a drill and make some pillars and build a deck. That's flat. Then I can put stuff on that. So I don't have to do gardening on that area. So the bigger the deck, the, the less <laughs> garden work you have to do. Yeah, and if you go for a composite deck, you don't have to uh, give it any treatment in the future or anything. That, that's true, but ooh, the price difference is I, I do a lot of... Uh, oiling for that amount of money yeah but yeah i mean of course i want to 
level out a certain area of the garden and to get a full utilization i should also prepare for and build a retention wall then again those are crazy expensive and you need to prepare and it it needs to sit for a year before you build the wall and like all right if you just drill some pillars and uh build a deck I can build that all the way out to the ledge even with an overhang so but is there any option that isn't expensive at the moment <laughs> because i mean building a deck that's not free either not with lumber leaving prices it. <laughs> leaving yeah. that's that's the only <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, i i i'm of course it, it's on the same area that i i would like to place a container and make that not uh, a hideous eyesore um and i actually found a guy who sold some containers decent ones not far away so I'm like all right this is acceptable and uh had a chat with them okay they're inside so you need uh, a heavy duty uh, forklift to actually lift them down and get them out and then of course you need the truck with the crane so i just i sent an email to a company close by i'm like all right what what you charge <laughs> and of course the, the transport cost uh for the truck alone is uh, just as much as container <laughs> like <laughs> crap so now i found one that's like all right this i could actually accept paying for but all right it's, uh, i'm gonna double again when you got it installed so uh, I'll, I'll wait <laughs> you don't have a friend with a truck who needs some kind of weird instrument or something built for them <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I know. I don't think I, I know someone with a, a crane of that size, but also it's uh, 500 kilometers plus away. So it's rather expensive driving the truck down just to do a favor and then back again. So, yeah, in mean, fuel alone, that's a bit much. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the thing. I have an uncle who runs a, a transport company and he has uh, like a huge excavator and he has. Uh, like a lorry and everything but of course just get everything down here it takes one day to drive it down and one day i back up again and the the fuel cost alone is like it's, it's not worth it i can't get myself to ask someone to spend an entire weekend sitting in a lorry to just do me a favor so <laughs> and does it need does it need lifting off with a crane or does to get it into position or yeah it yeah. is a a good 10 meter it, it's not long but you need a crane um and of course it's an option to set it down outside of the garage and then i can just use the the truck with the the side lift or what they call it so that yeah. you could just put it down by the side and then i can outfit it and then i can lift it to place next year but again they they still charge you per the hour for for the use of the car so if it's that or a crane it, there's relatively no difference and then there's the fuel cost and so on so yeah Fair but i mean that's that's what you need to pay and of course they that's their job and their living so i don't feel too bad about it but it's like yeah i would like to see the prices for the containers drop a bit more they have been like steadily uh, dropping after the pandemics so yeah i have time nice. you just have to find someone pretty close by so it's not an arm and a leg just to pay for fuel to drive there yeah i've seen a few around and like i can't see people using them very much so uh but yeah so one day someone is going to sell one so close by that it's like uh, you need to rent a truck for a max an hour or something so then it's a no-brainer so it's um last week was all birthdays and anniversaries with me so yeah not much making done although having thought about it for a second or two i did make michelle a wooden anniversary card yeah that was really nice <laughs> with a brass hinge <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was the literally the day before the anniversary and she said have you got me i said no she said, I've not got you one. Let's make each other cards. I still don't know. Let's just go and buy one. <laughs> uh, 
no, that wasn't an option. So uh, we both disappeared for a couple of hours and uh, returned with the uh, homemade cards. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you get? Uh, she um, she did the lino uh, relief carving and print, bl- printed me a card. Hmm. Yeah, which was uh, obviously her card was better than mine. <laughs> it looks well, I mean, that's. <laughs> Better is really hard way to to say in this kind of situation <laughs> when it's so different. I mean, yeah. No, I've seen them. Yeah, she, she did yeah. better, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, I mean, you're, you're comparing the high jump with the 500 meter running yeah. or something like that. It's two different uh, sports, so it's yeah. doesn't matter. The high jump is more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, true. I mean, everybody can run if they're just been chased so yeah not impressed <laughs> fair enough yeah. fair enough i tried Actually, i tried <laughs> if i'd um if i'd given it a little bit more thought and had a little bit more time i would have i've been thinking about making a wooden card for quite some time now and um i, I can do it better so maybe another occasion probably christmas i might have a go at making a, a slightly better one <laughs> a slightly <laughs> better one yeah <laughs> Is it so you can increase every year and be slightly better, slightly better? Well, you've got to keep expectations up, haven't you? <laughs> Leave room you should, to you grow. Should start, you should start now then, because, I mean, suddenly it's Christmas and, oh no, I'm too late. <laughs> Mark my words, You're not wrong. Last, last episode before Christmas. So how are your gift going, Glenn? Oh, uh. crap. <laughs> <laughs> We can't be start talking about Christmas already. I mean, it was midsummer just the uh, other weekend. Yeah, of I course. Yes, a... it's getting darker every day from now on. I know. Blah. Yeah, blah, the blah. nights are really drawing in, aren't they now? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, uh, I'm feeling the the like the the damp grip of winter depression yeah. just creeping <laughs> around your neck slowly, yeah. just tightening ever so slightly. Yeah. It's nice to put out a feel good podcast every week, isn't it, Havard? <laughs> oh, it's it's very much it's the it's the pill you need. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not the pill you want. <laughs> well, Sometimes there's a overlap in that Venn diagram. <laughs> so, Havard, what did you get up to last week? I mean, we all know what you got up to, but let's hear it from you. <laughs> yeah, well, uh that that is also a thing here in Norway. Of course, uh, it's, it's hard getting any work done between all the holidays, and of course, every time it's uh, a nice day out, people take long lunches or half day off to head into the woods and drink coffee and relax and listen to the birds. So I did that, and then uh, of course uh, <laughs> I wanted my Irish coffee, and then happens to be I have a petrol powered kitchen aid so I just made myself some cream on the go <laughs> oh such a brilliant build <laughs> I absolutely oh. loved that video I thought that was just so fantastic just building something for building's sake is my kind of thing I just loved it and it looks really good yeah yeah and I had this moment when you start taking things apart and then at one point, I stripped the bolt that keeps the clutch in place. So, okay, I can't get it any more apart than this. And then I started taking the KitchenAid apart. And then, all right, you have the axle in there, which is the axles that go through the electric motor, but it sticks out in the back. And it almost fits inside the sleeve of the petrol engine. So I just have to hand file it into a more square profile. So it's like, two or three minutes grinding with a hand file and it fit like a hand in a glove and they're like i just need some spacer place and i'm done here so it's like (laughs) that was a real boost and then of course i was just waiting for a nice day to do the filming because i've started to get this picture in my head of how i wanted to film it and of course i'll do it in the daytime I'll go up to the lake. There, people are at work. Nobody's there. Um, the pensioner hasn't gotten up yet. Uh, so yeah, I filled the well, the the bicycle trailer with all the equipment and uh, ran into the woods. And lo and behold, 
I was <laughs> not alone. <laughs> so uh, finding the most secluded spot and filming all the quiet parts and then just uh, had an extra think of, all right, how do I make the noisy bits that fit in between? And then I just have five hours there. I really scared the birds and the kids and the people trying to have a <laughs> nice lunch out by the lake. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing they were just thinking, all right, someone is doing a chainsaw. It's uh, <laughs> how it sounds like. <laughs> how big of an audience did you have? I think there was uh, uh, upwards to 20 people uh, on the <laughs> site. But of course, most of them were on the other side of the lake. So they could probably just see me going back and forth doing something uh, when I was moving the camera around to film different angles. And then they suddenly heard some... <laughs> and then, uh, of course, moving the camera and filming several angles there as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Because I did get a kind of stressed feeling <laughs> from you watching the video when you were actually running the thing. As in, this is a limited time. I have to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that's... It's the forecast is brilliant weather on Saturday and we don't have much planned. So I'm thinking I would like to do a whisk off. So I have the or the wife have the electrical one. I have now the petrol one. So it's gonna like who of them makes cream the fastest or uh, <laughs> pancake batter or whatever. So I'm just gonna put them side to side and like uh, fill up the ingredients and press play. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a quick process with the with the petrol one? And you tried it. Um, oh. <laughs> movie magic. Um, <laughs> I didn't make the the cream from scratch there when oh. with so so many people at site. So I had actually foreseen that. Uh, so I actually had some pre made cream with me, uh, so I could uh, put in the cup. <laughs> I fooled me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I I checked the original engine and it's 700 watts. And this petrol engine is around a thousand. So power wise, it's not much difference. I'm not sure if it the petrol engine is just as fast or not, because it's, it's hard to tell because everything is a blur when it's spinning. But um works flawlessly and of course not being overpowered i don't think i can actually break the axle or anything so if i just keep it well lubricated as it was intended from the factory it should be running for for years yeah of course I, i'm having a hard time arguing for putting it on the on the kitchen bench so it, <laughs> it might it might live on my wall in um my workshop but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take it apart um and i'm gonna use it uh for good occasions uh so uh, yeah i'm of course uh, i thought about having a video series with, with will it whisk um and it would be cool to to need some bread dough but i don't want to overload it so i don't want to see if you can mix concrete that or whatever because it actually came out too nice so i would like to keep it <laughs> yep You want to see if you can sell it and see if it's worth more now than when you bought it. <laughs> <laughs> you can put an ad yeah, up. it would be fun to put it out and like yeah. uh, <laughs> just put a stupid again, price it's... on it. But how about <laughs> warranty? Am I liable for any anything? I mean, it's uh... <laughs> sold a scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could no be... taxis, backsies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that would could be a way for some were to go viral in another way to get some traffic as well if you get you can get some local news or something about this oh, <laughs> and, yeah, awesome. and now before we leave today this is a picture of a man <laughs> using a petrol powered <laughs> kitchen aid <laughs> i was thinking about that of course it's i don't want to spell, spend my valuable time but i think last year someone outside of scarpet festival and was making Uh, these uh, specialty pancakes uh, because yes. they have made some forms and so on. So, of course, I could set up a booth out there and just uh, make uh, pancake batter like uh, every 10 minutes, just fire it up and 
of course, with a crowd, someone should <laughs> come and have a look at that. I feel like you need. And to I mean, make... it's 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 not that heavy. I can I can take it under my arm. I can, or probably I could make a like a harness to it, so I can just carry it around like a purse. I could put thing in the bowl as well, and if I need something mixed, I have it readily available. I feel like you should make some sort of oven to go with it or something now. You know, maybe a, like an oven, but with multiple burners coming in. So you put something in and it's incinerated within a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about when you have, when you made the voiceover, like don't mix <laughs> rocket fuel in it this time. And then that's a bloody good idea because if you put the ingredients in and you really whisk it <laughs> so you get the air in as well it's just one spark and it will be uh, yeah. uh, a fiery spectacle so that <laughs> that would have been an amazing video but it might not have looked the same afterwards unfortunately so the one question i have with it is do you get a hint of two stroke uh, exhaust with the cream or whatever you're mixing in the bowl or is the few are the fumes going the other well, way? The exhaust goes out straight back. So unless you're in a confined space, you should be okay. Um, but of course, everything smells of two-stroke oil. It's, it's like when you're riding a moped, you, you can smell that on your clothes and everything yeah. for yeah, that's hours what I afterwards. So. <laughs> the uh, lake you went to was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah it's nice. brilliant. It's uh, yeah. I think it took me it takes me about 10, 10, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes on a bicycle to get there. So it's, wow. it's basically behind our house there. Is fishing a big sport in Scan in Scandinavia? Do you get a lot of fishermen? Yeah, some. Yes, yeah. some, but I don't, I don't feel it is as big as it is in, for instance, the States where they have like huge warehouses that only sell uh, fishing equipment for uh, recreational fishermen. So yeah, it's, the, it's the number one pass, pastime in this country as well. Yeah. It's, it's not as much here. I mean, the, the river and the salmon season is, is big. Uh, people travel from afar, uh, but... I mean, in a regular lake, there is a lot of lakes here, and mm. I never see someone just fishing there. I mean, if they are, it's with their kids or something. So, I don't think it's much in the lakes. It's more in the ocean, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the, and the Baltic Ocean—that's not. It's mostly dead anyway, so it's not that much to go <laughs> fishing. In. But no. on the west coast, that's that's more, I think. <laughs> and as soon as I said dead or death or whatever I said, everything died. <laughs> That's a, it's a key word. We're like Pavlo's dog. Yeah. Someone mentioned death. It's like, all right, it's time to end. <laughs> so um, you, you were editing last night, weren't you, Havar? What are you working on at the moment? Oh, uh, I was basically editing the uh, the long form build video because I do wow. have a two and a half uh, hour edit of uh, KitchenAid. So I I filmed the disclaimer in the beginning, and of course I started compiling and rendering that video, and I was uploading it. I planned to have it uploaded just before this recording. <laughs> And while it were uploading, I was just writing down all the timestamps and I realized because I put the disclaimer in first, it has shifted everything, uh. but not the voiceover track. So the voiceover in the middle <laughs> did not match to the footage <laughs> and fuck, I need to render it again. And that's, I, I think it used uh, an hour and 50 minutes rendering that oh, two and a half man. hour video. So, yeah. That's going to be for tomorrow. <laughs> so yesterday I was doing some editing and then making a new thumbnail. And then I realized something that if I do this some other time, of course, you can choose um, at the end of your video, for instance, which two of your videos you want people to be able to click on the screen to jump on to the next one. 
So you could actually have two videos ready, upload them, uh, and you can put them as uh, non-public so it doesn't show up anywhere. And then you can publish a third video where you're saying that, all right, I just made this video. Uh, if you click on the left link here, you get to the short one. And then if you click on the other one, you get the long one. So you can actually make one video with uh, almost mimicking an uh, interactive feature when they then after uh, you've said that, you get two choices on screen and then do I want to see the short one or the long one? <laughs> so that would be fun to try next time I have a long project, which is probably going to be my next project. <laughs> so. Are you saying that you could basically do a choose your own adventure with yeah. YouTube videos? If you do a chain of these... Oh God, that would be a horrible. A lot of work, but yeah, yeah. that. I mean, <laughs> but you amazing. got to think. You got to think through that entire. <laughs> what do you want me? What do you want me? <laughs> Should you what do you, what do you want to see not? me build? <laughs> yeah. Do you want metal work or do you want woodworking? Choose, and then they choose, and then all right, should it be powered by electrical or gasoline? But oh man, that's going to be a lot of videos. <laughs> <laughs> should Hover stay at work, or should he sneak away to the workshop and do some jobs? Yeah. <laughs> but it's Unless just three hours of you sitting behind a computer having meetings. <laughs> that's a good video. We'll just change the subject a little bit and talk about forgotten projects. All right. Oh, what did I forget yeah. now? I'm intrigued. <laughs> All three of us have um, talked about projects that we, we were going to start and then I've not heard anything else about it. So mine was learning to play the, the cigar box guitar. That yeah. came in the in the workshop and I've not done anything about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Other than create a folder to put the video clips in. I've not done anything for that. <laughs> <laughs> Does that qualify as starting? <laughs> not really. Uh, <laughs> no. Maybe. I was sat in here waiting for the uh, link to come through tonight and I picked it up and had a little a little play on it again, but uh, I think that's been about the first time in about four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and so now who should we go on to? Forgotten projects? Is it KJ or Hogar? KJ. I was kind of. I'm Batteries. trying to figure out. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of hoping that you have lined up all our so, and you have. Uh, what's the status on this project? And uh, <laughs> I didn't think I had to try no. to remember what I forgot. Oh no, I've, I've I know what you've forgotten. Well. <laughs> Well, let's start with KJ with the batteries. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm going to blame that uh, partly on time, but mostly on being uh, uh, well on eBay not uh, delivering. Uh, so uh, the the connector I, I needed. So I I got a refund on that, and then uh. I actually bit the bullet. And uh, try the Alibaba instead. Yeah. <laughs> or AliExpress, I mean. That's what it's really called. It feels like it should be called whatever. And <laughs> I mean, the user experience there was really good. Uh, so I, uh, but I, f I felt dirty all the way <laughs> doing it. <laughs> oh, the, the algorithm of AliExpress is. Oh, when they start showing you things, oh, you bought that, you might be interested in this. And they're like, yes, I am. And then <laughs> it, uh, three hours later, I'm sitting there having a drink and like, I did not know this existed. I want it now. I need it now. So, yeah. yeah and and uh, so far, the customer experience has been really good. I mean, the, apart from they might be sending a little bit too much information about what the, how the package is going. And now it's in your country. Now it's cleared customs. And now it's on the way. Da, 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 da. But that's, that's, happy. that's brilliant because they didn't do that in the beginning. So then you got a order received and then it was six to 12 weeks before something showed up in your mailbox and like, what's this? I don't remember ordering. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I ordered that. Don't need that anymore. But they, they really picked up. So the, the delivery times are really short compared to what they used to be. And they they give you a decent uh, tracking as well. So but what's the you, status? You can't of... turn off. 
Sorry, what's the status of the delivery now then, KJ? Uh, I think it's late next week it's going to arrive, was their nice. estimation, I think. Uh, so, but yeah, but I, I still have three videos to edit. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, in, I'm in no rush into getting anything done. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's still on the list. It's not forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just time. Yeah. It's mostly <laughs> the problem. I had um, a free day on Sunday to go in the workshop, and I didn't go in. I didn't feel like it. Partly Good because I'm partly because I'm not quite sure what I want to make at the moment. So <laughs> you don't have a long list of stuff to do. I have a list, but the thing is, I write things down, and then I go off the idea of making it. So. Yeah. I mean, you are allowed to purge that list and just, nah, nah, yeah. and just... Yeah, I figured the next big opportunity I get to go in there, I'll just start messing about and I'm sure something will uh, come out of the workshop by the end of the day. <laughs> so, Hovar. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm... Uh... Any ideas? No, I'm... I'm... No. No? Not sure. Okay, children's book. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, it's it's a tricky one, that. It's, <laughs> and the worst thing is, it it's done. Um, I just have to. I made all the text, so it's basically to record the voiceover and then stretch every page to match that before it switches. So it is an evening's work. But then, of course, it's based on some teddy bears that I have. And it's when you see the tag on them, it is a trademark. And then should it be popular or anything, uh, then... There is, I mean, it's a it's a blue copy of the original teddy bear, so there is no uh, inspired by it's a it's a carbon copy almost. Right. So, and I did actually. Uh, this is a few years ago when I actually made the book and I printed a few of them. I actually contacted the company just to clarify is, if is it okay if I sell these and. I never got a reply for them. And it's obvious it's a company who they order these from Alibaba. And then, of course, if you order enough of them, you can just slap your logo on them. They, they don't make them themselves. It's a company who sells everything. So if they don't answer, and I've tried Google image search to figure out if this is something that's sold everywhere, that's also then free to use, but I have not got to a solution there. So before I continue the last leg, I would like to clarify that. So I just don't end up in a mess where I have to remove the video again. Um, and then of course I started thinking, well, I could, make some new drawings i have the storyline so i could just change the design of them but then i remember how much i used on the original drawing so i mean if i really sit down and concentrate i can probably redraw two of them in a night so that that's a fourth night just powering through getting the the drawings and then it's the coloring and everything so it's basically weeks of work right. <laughs> so, and I, I, I haven't found the inspiration for that yeah, i mean it was a good idea when i know i have everything there it's just to throw it into uh, uh the video editing software and just tweak it a bit and then you can easily have a video out so yeah <laughs> so that's that fair enough <laughs> nothing is easy no nothing is easy but soon it's summer <laughs> <laughs> but back to the one not feeling inspired um i did chat with a guy who actually just been spending a couple of weeks like not wanting to go into his workshop because there was too much to do and uh, we had a chat and of course you, sh you should try to not have that barrier i mean if you don't have anything to do your workshop should be a place where you can just go. I could just bring a cup of coffee and just 
sit there and with your feet high. I mean, I think we all have felt the pressure of, I need to make something or I, I have something that I need to finish. And that might stress you so much that you either feel that it's not fun anymore or you feel that you're not getting anywhere. You just procrastinate and then, of course, you get stressed on that. So so sometimes I'm, I'm trying to convince myself that, all right, I, I don't want to make anything. I don't feel inspired and that's okay, but I can still, like, if I have 20 minutes, I can bring a coffee cup and instead of doom scrolling on my phone, I can, I can do that in my workshop because it is a pleasant, I like being there, but I don't always feel inspired to make something, but I can still hang out there. So trying to get over that threshold, but it is a strange feeling when you're in there because you feel like I should be doing something because it's a room full of tools. Yeah. So I yeah. should be making <laughs> something, but. I think my main stumbling block is the where I store all the timber under the bench. You literally have to lie on the floor and, and pull timber out until you find the bit you want. <laughs> and uh, that's just hard work. <laughs> so you need to put a mattress on the floor so it's nice to lay <laughs> yeah. down there. I think I need better timber storage. <laughs> I was going to say, that's, that's, that's your solution. next project plan. It's yeah. a timber storage solution. <laughs> that yeah. involves... Uh, that would involve me selling a lot of fishing tackle. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that's, that takes up a big portion of my uh, spare area. Not spare area, it's the, where I keep my other hobbies and my work tools. Mm. But yeah, no, if, I, if I cleared that one day, then maybe maybe I could yeah. have better timber storage. I sorry. have. Sorry. Sorry, sorry about the extra noise tonight. I've got the door open because it's so hot here at the moment. <laughs> Except the old car is kind of nice. You can hear the bird chirping and so on. So, yeah, yeah. sounds nice. Lily just came up and waved through, <laughs> at me through the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very much of the persuasion that if I don't have inspiration, I just go to the workshop and tidy up a bit. There's always some, some stuff that I need to put something back in its proper place or there's always yeah. a mess somewhere. And at the moment, I mean, my my wood storage is a bit, I mean, the the main problem is a lot of the shelves are full. So I have to reorganize and actually clear out some of some of the junk because not all of it is it's made to be, be be saved. So now that it's full, some some stuff have to have to go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You always need so... more space. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing I, I feel that i'm also there that I, I need to do a purge i have saved up some materials and some offcuts of course all the materials from the that conference table bench uh, solution after i built the the ice cream van i mean it, it is some nice materials there but they are a bit odd and they have a window in them and so you need to find the perfect project to utilize it fully and it's just taking up space so at some point i just need to yeah dump it somewhere uh, and cry about it for a day but then of course realize <laughs> i now have room in my workshop again <laughs> you don't cry about it then do you um you cry about it two weeks later when you think, oh, shit, I wish I'd saved that. I've got the yeah. ideal project for it. That's the worry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Yep. <laughs> and of course, I um, I have maybe done a, a realization this week, and of course, it's going to change again next week, but I have come to the conclusion I don't want or I don't need a laser. Um, so... That can't be true. No, but the thing is, I've I've been looking at this bench top metal lades, and I I want that more, and that's a skill that I I that would be a really milestone. The, the day I can make my own bolt and thread a knot onto it, and like I actually made that from scratch. That knowledge, then being also able to make axles for various projects and so on. So that's. I think I bumped that relatively high up on my list, but I don't have the counter space for it. And the welder is standing 
luckily on wheels, but I'm just moving it every time I need to get to something. So it's like space is an issue. And of course, if I now purge my material storage, I could fit the metal lathe there. So that might help me through the winter if I doesn't get the, the container solution in place before the snowfall. But uh, yeah. And then, of course, they uh, they have a sale with up to 30% on various Bosch tools. So I have mm -hmm. a shopping cart with a, a battery and an extra drill and so on. So it's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you always want everything, but some things you want more than other things. And you have to go that go down that priority list in the right order, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. What's on your list of wants, KJ? That's a good question. You're quite sensible, aren't you, with things like that? I try to be. Um, yeah, because I don't have any needs at the moment. Are we talking wants? Yeah, I know. But I mean, that, 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 they, they, you have an overlap of the wants yeah. and the needs. And, uh, I mean... Oh, sorry. I, I wouldn't say no to a laser, but I'm not going to buy one. And a, and a TIG welder would also be really nice, but I don't really have a use for that either. So it's, I mean, it's I, I'm more or less waiting for a, a need to arise, arise so that some of the wants can be, a clear, a clear want can be, uh, popped up the list so it's visibly above all the others because as it is at the moment it's a more or less even playing field and no want is bigger than than the other <laughs> so I, I think yeah, I, I need I need a need yeah yeah and um, well it is a need but it, it's fueled out of a want um, of course when it comes to woodworking now there is a lot of tools that would be nice to have but i have enough rudimentary tools that i i can build most things of course it's cumbersome because you have to maybe make it in parts or you have to use uh, not the best tools maybe so you have to spend more time sanding and think about details more but i can at least the projects that i do i now have the tools to do in wood but of course in metal I basically have two angle grinders, uh, which I know is, is not enough by a mile, <laughs> and, and a welder. But of course, a metal lathe is a huge step towards opening up the possibility of making a lot of silly projects in metal. And of course, or such tube notchers, because Getting metal tubes or square pipes is relatively cheap and easy, but uh, having a tube notcher where you can cut various angles for welding it together, that is also high up on the list. So there, there is a few of these like, like essential metal tools um, that I should have to be able to like uh, pull off like 60% of the projects I want to build. Of course, also I want a, a, like a, a tube bender so you can get uh, various uh, radiuses. and. Yeah, a roller would be really fun to have. I don't need one, but I would want <laughs> one. <laughs> it seems like yeah. the natural progression from getting a metal lathe would be a milling machine to me. That's where I probably want yeah. to go with that. Those scare me. I used them when I was very young. They're, I think they're fantastic. <laughs> The shield, but then again, scary. <laughs> I've seen this small benchtop lathe with a with a small uh, mounted dr drill or router on them, so you can make these uh, key notches and so on onto axles. Yeah. That would be really nice. And yes, having a big one would have been amazing <laughs> if I had. Uh... <laughs> 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 I've never seen a spit take that clearly before. And so spontaneously, it's like uh, he didn't even have to think uh, before the innuendo just dropped there. <laughs> Come on, carry on if you had a big one. <laughs> yeah, then of course, it's 
having a CNC router for wood, it would be hard not to have a, a CNC version, and those are relatively expensive, but it feels hard spending a lot of time learning manually to use a, a metal router when you know that you already have the skills to design it. So if you just had the CNC functionality, you yeah. could just make it and press play. But you can say the same about a lathe as well. You get those fully automated as well. But I really want to learn the, the handcraft, basically. So I remember a discussion when we were talking about um, lathes with Tim and we were talking uh, wood lathes. And you said, yeah, but what are you going to make with a, a wood lathe? You know, it's a bowl, <laughs> a round <laughs> bowl. It's just, surely it's the same for a metal one. <laughs> How many axles do you need to make for things? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, but the, the threads making thing on the automated thread things, that's really, it's fascinating to me that you can just pull some levers yeah. and, and then and then it makes a really good thread. And, and, that's, and that's the thing, of course, with the, with the, the KitchenAid. Some of the the screws had very weird shapes, so you should really have a specialty tools, but luckily they weren't torqued that hard, so I got them out. And inside, uh, they, um, there were two threaded rods that I used to actually tension the spacer plate in place. And those had some weird threads. So, of course, I just took the... Uh, the one not with me to the hardware store and went to the specialty section and no, they did not have those threads on anything. So of course I was terrified for stripping anything because then I had to order that for the two week delivery at a crazy price probably. And of course being able to, sometimes you buy something and it has some specialty, uh, bolts or something and all right it might take me a few hours but i can actually make what i need that is kind of cool yeah speaking of you making what you need i've been thinking how well would your cnc do with aluminium because that's basically a um they said in (laughs) yeah (laughs) um they said in the spec sheet that you you can do soft aluminium. I mean, pure aluminium. If there is, you, you get various uh, hardnesses. But uh, yeah. it is like if I I would have to build a case around it, and of course, it is. You have to go slow and not cut very much, and then you have the problem of heat input, and you yeah. want some cooling. But I mean, it's the machine is built for wood, so it's it's not covered in all the places. So if you try to mess with cutting fluid uh, for coolant and so on, it's yeah, yeah. They threw it in there as a sales pitch, but I yeah. don't think uh, I would use it for that. Because I was thinking now that you have a, a proper welder, you could weld aluminium as well, and then you can make all kind of funky stuff with that uh, yes. <laughs> um, i'm sorry <laughs> well welding aluminium is yes i know it's really hard yeah but i mean but you yeah, need to go i have the i have the tools so yeah, yeah. you just you now you just need a skill how hard can it be <laughs> <laughs> see you in a year <laughs> Yeah, of course. At some point, I, I'm, I'm going to weld the aluminium, uh, and it's not going to look nice, but as long as it's strong enough, then you can always grind it down and paint yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. You don't know that it's not going to look nice. You've not tried it yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Maybe uh, yeah, I'm struggling with steel and stainless and... All this aluminium stuff is really easy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're just a reverse welder. That's... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be hard. It's easy for you. The other way around. <laughs> well, one can dream, but I don't think that's the reality, though. 
as long as you haven't tried, you don't know. Is that the way you're going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just got a text message. Um, someone at an online marketplace put out a ridiculously cheap ATV for kids. And I like, you have to be the first one. And I sent a message, didn't hear anything, came back, checked. No, the message didn't send. So I just rewrote, I tried to send you a message, but it didn't send. So I'm interested. I'll buy it. I'll come and get it. And then I got the reply. Oh, it's uh, already promised it to one guy. But if he doesn't show, then <laughs> I'm maxed. But I, I've been in that situation before, and this is too good to be true. So he's, he's not going to not pick it up. So, yeah, it's just slipped through my fingers there. Yeah, It might have an accident. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <I'll> just... <laughs> I've been uh, looking at a, a wood lathe because I've been, I got, I got more fascinated with it by doing, by doing the off center turning that you're is it TFT turning TF turning TF, TF turning, turning yes. isn't it yeah yeah with the off center stuff so I'm a little bit more fascinated with that so I, I think uh, a, a lathe is going to be quite a a, a very re, um, a, <laughs> something that's going to happen soon is what I'm trying to say <laughs> see it's not just you guys that have difficulty with this language <laughs> <laughs> nice nice <laughs> yeah. But I think if I think we have discussed this earlier, I'm not sure if we did it on the podcast or if it was just with Tim. But I mean, having dust extraction on a lathe—that's yeah. a <laughs> that's an uphill battle. But <laughs> I, I think I would at least build an enclosure behind it so that most of the stuff falls down, or it well, if it hits the back wall, it then slides down, so it's very yeah. easy to vacuum vacuuming it up afterwards but I, i've seen some footage and they, they spew chips everywhere so it's uh yeah i've got but could you put it into i see it's relatively cheap to get these the sandblasting cabinet where you have the rubber gloves that you put your hand into <laughs> what if what if you have one of those but with a lathe inside that would be brilliant yeah that yeah, should yeah. be even be safer as well yeah i think i'm flying just yeah, yeah bulletproof glass yeah. Maybe just get a metal lathe, but just turn wood on it and put that in an enclosure. That would be safe. Yeah, can, it? yeah. Why? Why get a a wood lathe? I mean, you can turn wood on a metal lathe. I mean, it's yeah. the exact same thing, basically. Yeah, I would imagine the chisels are, to, are cheaper as well because they're literally just little sharp. It's little sharp tooling, isn't it? It's not a a big thing on a handle. Yeah, and it's probably. I mean, that's proper tools and they sell them to a lot of shops. So of course the price go down, but like the, for the woodworking lathe, that's like, that's for the, the romantics and like they, oh, we want the nice wood and look at this mahogany. I mean, it's, it's like bling for, a, for a crow. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's just to sell it. It has no practical use whatsoever. <laughs> like that big handle i mean four guys could hold on to it i mean it's it's <laughs> way too much <laughs> and then you have the, the automatic you, you clean up all the all the spilled uh, cutting fluid and oil and that sort of thing just sawdust with the next project to do in between <laughs> just makes yeah. one one metal one wood and then it's all clean up <laughs> So I can't see a problem with heat and like heated metal chips into uh, <laughs> oily sawdust. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> oily sawdust. Yeah, that's uh... <laughs> that could be interesting. <laughs> but then again, if you have a box like that, you could just, of course, you you you. It's basically built for sandblasting, so you also have a connection on the side for pressurized air. And I've seen these. It's basically air compressors, but they fit a really large valve to the tank and they use it to seat the uh, tires onto the rim. So uh, they just release all the air at once. You could do that here as well. You could put a, a big valve on your compressor. So you just fill it up. And when you're done, you just open the big valve and it really purged the box out and you have a hose that go outside. So it's like, Foof! and then of course the na neighbor's <laughs> house is covered in oily sawdust. <laughs> you need it compressing really for the, for the log burner, don't you? 
log burner. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get compressed um, sawdust bricks in Norway? We use them a lot, actually, here. Yeah, yeah, we have them. yeah. I, I, I see them, but they, I mean, we have so much firewood people selling that it's it's a novelty. You can get right. it in the stores, but it, it's not a huge product oh, okay. sale. So, I think pellets are a bigger thing than because then you can automate it easier. Yeah, uh, right. More than the bricks, yeah. but those uh, unfortunately are are expensive. But I, I saw this. I wanted to buy that once. You you can get this log press for, uh, yeah, sawdust. But people also take like a newspaper yeah, and yeah. so on and soak it and make uh, fire bricks out of that. And I remember the one year at uni when I just removed the sticker on my mailbox, say I I don't want any ads or anything. And I mean, if I had that log maker then i mean i would be self-sufficient on firewood just by all the the pamphlets <laughs> and papers for the local <laughs> shopping malls and whatnot so, so it would be cool to make your own bricks and then of course you have the oily sawdust and you have some other oil from your car and i mean, I mean you can make some really energy dense uh yeah exactly bricks. yeah <laughs> might be some interesting smoke coming from a chimney but <laughs> uh, who cares it's dark when you light your fire isn't it yeah no, i think <laughs> maybe that's a product if you mix in some rocket fuel as well because <laughs> the surprise brick <laughs> if we ask welsh thomas as a chimney sweep i mean you have a lot of buildup of residue but i have a theory if you burn hot enough and then you have uh, uh, add some rocket fuel for some extra boof you can you can clear a chimney real good. <laughs> I was thinking you could um, add just some oxides and get lovely colours coming out the top of the chimney so the next door neighbour thinks they're living next to a witch. <laughs> <laughs> or the Pope. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbours have elected a new yeah. Pope. <laughs> yeah, the, con the conclave is completed. <laughs> yeah, but that is cool, though, because... I learned this by accident, and then I got it confirmed later on. Uh, these, uh, when they do riot control or whatever, you get this smoke box, as, and it's basically the same ingredients as in rocket fuel, but it's a different mix ratio, so it doesn't burn as fast because then it creates a lot more smoke. So, of course, I could make some small logs that burn slowly but create a lot of smoke. But of course, it would be white, so it would be cool to see. Could I mix something in and get colored smoke? Because it would be cool to fire one of those off and like uh, have a like a locomotive uh, style of uh, fumes <laughs> coming out your pipe, but in various colors. <laughs> so going back to this lathe thing, sorry, sorry to take you back to that. I know you're trying to get me away from the old man Weller's original lathe, but <laughs> um, so I've had my eye on one on Facebook Marketplace, and uh, I've got Shell to message the guy, and it's still available, and it's, it seems all right. Shall we see if we can get it to press the button while we're on the podcast and see if I get a lathe before next episode? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's... it sounds like you need something in the workshop to get your mojo back. Yeah, exactly. So... Exactly. And it's smart having so, your wife like so, so, being sometimes a dealer. I, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I, I do that myself. Yeah, I, if I try to be strategic, all right, if I have my wife, because sometimes they're like, oh, it's actually a, a, a lady who is interested in this cool. And then, all right, of course, of course you can have it. And then they may might get a good deal if I come along. It's like, oh, it's an old bearded <laughs> bloke. Of course he wants that. So, all right. We're not giving anything here, so you're paying full price. <laughs> so I'll message you now and say, KJ and Hovar <laughs> say I should get that laid. <laughs> <laughs> Blame us, I don't. That, that's what you said, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, you, you have it recorded now. So. Exactly. <laughs> I'm doing it. Talk amongst yourself for a second. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to say that uh, I can That's answer it. the message uh, for the ATV guy. <laughs> I 
Oh, this is prime podcasting. Oh, everyone oh, keep, on their phone. Keep it, keep it going, KJ. Come on. Yeah, talking about uh, podcast uh, mishaps, uh, I listened to the Fits All podcast the other day, and they, I mean, they, they don't really have a, a schedule. I think it's like a couple of months than the, since the last did an episode. And now it was yeah. episode 46, and they mistakenly re released episode 40. And it took them <laughs> a day or two to fix it. And I started listening to it, but to, to hmm. I f- this feels kind of. Uh, this doesn't really fit the timeline because he was working on that tool way back, and no, he was not in a relationship at, for a couple of months. Hmm, this something is off. And then I, no, I've heard this before, and then I had to go back and see that it was the wrong one. I and mean, if we, when you do the edit, if you, if you take the time to actually split the timeline into what you're talking about. So tonight is it's KitchenAid, uh, lathe and sexual innuendo and <laughs> then you label them it, it it will double the editing time but after a, a year or two then you should just like all right, we need an intro and then we need to talk about some tools. <laughs> so then we have 40 clips of various tools. So, all right, we haven't talked uh, about drill presses for a while. So, all right, you take the drill press and <laughs> all right, uh, drill. So sexual innuendo. Okay, drill. Yeah, pull that in. So we can probably <laughs> have a, a base for just constructing new episodes just in the edit. That's <laughs> Good to have when we don't want to talk to each other anymore. She's she's just messaged back. She's questioning your experience on lathes, both of you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Well, I basically I'm at zero, and rightly so. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we want you to try it out for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, going back to the podcast thing, we have a we got a new gig at the weekend. Did you see that on Instagram? No, I've barely been on Instagram. No? no? So the Norwegian maker, how do you pronounce his handle? Is it Rolf? I always say Rolville. But I think I've got that <laughs> oh, wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it? Rolf. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it reminds me of that, uh, <laughs> that uh, clip where... What's it? What's he called? Martin, something uh, famous actor uh, playing a Frenchman trying to learn American and trying to say hamburger <laughs> in a badly French accent. It's like, yeah, that's what I said, Dembaga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. He, uh, sorry, the Norwegian maker was. Um, he posted on uh, Instagram at the weekend that he was waiting outside a hotel to pick up Shaka Khan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> whilst listening to the podcast so we're we're warmer packs for Shaka Khan now <laughs> never thought I would do that so, exactly yeah. that's, that's wonderful <laughs> I don't know what that is but sounds good to me <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a Disney villain from uh, the Lion King or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit a bit Disney villain yes <laughs> was that a wrap yes yes yeah, you're hosting you can call it i'm calling it the end good night <laughs> <laughs>